Hey guys, Ranger here, and welcome back to the interview to the finale of season eight of MLP School Rays, episode 26. Episode 26, School Rays, part two. Now, I won't deny there's a part of me that kind of doesn't want to finish this because then season eight's over, but it's been a while now since this, this episode is out, and I really need to get caught up anyway, so I won't be left out. But. <sighs> I kind of don't want to because I just kind of want to, want it to linger, you know. But let's go ahead and get started because I really don't want to miss the episode. So let's left, let's pick up where we left off. Okay! She's still freaking evil! Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, there's a few things to go over with this episode. Um, first off, Cozy... She, she manipulated the main six into going to Tartarus so she could uh, lure them away. So nobody would stand in the way of her plans to drain all the magic from Equestria and send the magic into a different realm. So she would, so she could make more friends and use that power to rule over all of Equestria. That was her gimmick. That was her plan. She was crazy. She was completely insane. She has no care or concern for anyone whatsoever except herself. She doesn't care about anyone. She used the school. She used the classmates. She used the students to her own gain. And she used her talent, which is pu pulling a very cunning, very believable story, a very believable act into she got the students to at first believe her but of course it was a int very interesting setup here cozy wanted to take over she wanted to rule the school and rule rule and be the princess empress of friendship and of course the uh, student six were able the student, it's, it's, there's a few different interesting things here, of course. Chancellor Naysay got his butt handed to him on a silver platter. And so he's not really a bad guy anymore. Still don't like him. But he was so strict about the school being run by EEA, by EEA guidelines. And then he got his butt handed to him on a silver platter by Cozy. And so the very students that he were that he was against ended up saving him. Oh, how sweet karma can be at times. And of course, so yeah, now he's okay. Now he's totally fine with the school being run, however. And he's totally cool with it. Which I still think it's arrogant of him. I still think it's upsetting. That he would literally be totally fine with the school being run now with the students attending, considering how much of a racist prick that he was before. And now he's totally fine with the students simply because he got his butt handed to him on a silver platter. Yeah. Yeah. Still not totally buying it with him. Still waiting for that moment that, yeah. Still. Yeah, I'm still not a fan of him. The main six realized that all the creatures in Tartarus was still had a little bit of magic ability left. And so by using that ability, they would be able to get, try and get some screenshots here. By using the creature's power, what a little bit of magic that they had left, Twilight was able to harness just enough magic to be able to break the lock. She was able to harness just enough magic to be able to break the lock and escape Tartarus. And like I said, during this scene, whenever they were all trying to escape, I honestly thought at first here Twilight was going to pull a Riku and was going to be like, go on, my friends, leave, leave me behind. That's what I was afraid she was going to do because, man, that irritated the crap out of me at the end of Kingdom Hearts whenever Riku and Mickey stayed behind in the realm of darkness because they had to be... They had to be the heroes and sacrifice himself and stay on the other side. Yeah. I didn't like that. Still not. Still don't like it. But, yeah. I honestly was afraid that's what Twilight was going to do. So I'm glad she did, in fact, get out. I'm glad. 
very glad she managed to escape just fine. There was one thing that Cozy did not plan on, of course, which was the uh, which was the Tree of Harmony. The Tree of Harmony was able to give, I'm, I'm assuming the Tree of Harmony and also the Power of Friendship helped the Student Six to be able to it save them and they were able to grab hold of the, the of the artifacts which was helping to harness that magic and gather the magic it was interesting because how this was a risk this was a major risk for them because they didn't know the outcome of what was going to happen all they knew was grabbing the objects could mean a major explosion that would destroy the school yet it was something that they were, were willing to try and honestly I'm honestly I would have done the same thing that they did I would have done the same thing hose down without a second thought because at this point cozy had was draining all the magic from all of Equestria and she was just about to fi finally fully succeed and drain all the magic. They knew she was evil. She's going to take over. And at the very least, if this, if killing yourself meant killing the per, if like caught caught, if pulling the, if basically lighting the fuse on a bomb and sacrificing yourself. By killing the the person that is evil and trying to take over everything, yeah, it would have kind of been a, a heroic sacrifice, a very valiant effort. But they didn't know the outcome of what was going to happen. They weren't sure, but they took the risk anyway, and the magic was able to restore itself all over Equestria, including to the creatures and Tartarus. And uh, they were able, they find out Cozy's plan. Cozy wanted to make friends, but not because she wanted friends. She wanted to make friends because it meant to her power. And she wanted to use that power and become the empress of friendship and overthrow Twilight and all of the princesses. She wanted to abuse that power and become all-powerful. And, yeah. It's interesting that she, at this point, she had no remorse. She had no remorse for her actions. She had no remorse for anything that she had done. And it's very comical here because she, whenever she, she tried to escape, the fact that he, she, there was so many other ponies, like here was Luna and Celestia, the princesses. Here was the other characters. And it was pretty much like the equestrian military was here and was just on hand or on hoof, ready to capture her. And it's very interesting. And of course, I have to get to the ending. Now, couple. Now, there's. I have to get to the ending. Uh, where Cozy is locked in. Cozy is locked in Tartarus, and she's locked there in a smaller cage. Here, but she's like beside of him. And at first, it looks like, you know, she's sitting there kind of sad. Looks like it kind of makes you think maybe she had a second thought. But then she just brightly, ex happily looks up at Tirak. She calls him neighbor. She knows that's Tirak, she knows it's him. And then, of course, the ominous foreshadowing ending where she looks at the audience and says, want to be friends. And the way she says it, and then the ominous shadows over her face and the music. This girl has no re regrets over what she did. Instead, she's plotting her revenge. She's planning on getting out. She's evil she's twisted she's demented and she wants revenge she isn't going to give up and yeah just the way that this ends is beast because it's really interesting to see that and a couple other things i really want to point out 
is um is uh I don't recall ever seeing a female guard before. So uh, you know, a female member of the Canterlot Royal Guard before. So it's very interesting to see a female guard this time around. Very cute design. Very cute design. Uh love love the fact that we now have a female uh royal guard. And it's very cute. It's very cute to see her and see the see a new female member of the Royal Guard. Uh I love I love her. I love her her design. Very cute. Um But I'm gonna say something now that I know I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, and I know some people are going to probably be upset with me, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. I am glad Cozy did not get redeemed in this episode. And uh, the reason why is because there are two reasons why. Well, first off, I, I'm glad that Cozy did not get redeemed in this episode because uh, Lightning Dust did not get redeemed. And there's been plenty of characters that have done bad things over the course of the show and got redeemed. Um... For the and 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 that's fine. I mean, I want Starlight to be good. I want Luna to be good. I want Discord to be good. But what I'm saying is, it would not have been fair for Cozy to have got redeemed in this episode, considering all that she did. But yet, Lightning Dust can't get redeemed, considering what she did was not as bad as what Cozy did. I would have been upset if Cozy had have got redeemed and Lightning Dust did not. It would not have been fair. And in my belief, if Lightning Dust can't get redeemed, I don't think Cozy Glow should. And I'm honestly hoping that Cozy does not get redeemed in the next season. I'm honestly hoping, and I don't anticipate that we will see a redemption episode or another episode in general with Lightning Dust in Season 9. So I'm hoping Cozy Glow does not get redeemed. I'm honestly hoping she does not get redeemed because if Lightning Dust can't get redeemed, if we can't get any closure with her character, I don't want to see it with Cozy. It is not, it should not happen. Considering what Cozy has done, all Lightning did was kind of use, uh, was use Scootaloo, one pony. She used one person. And she just got blasted off with a with a rocket. Cozy, however, manipulated the entire school. She manipulated a lot of other characters. She worked with T Rex and used a mechanism to drain all the magic from Equestria. And she was going to send it to another realm. She was going to become the Empress of Friendship. And she was she, what she did was bad enough to, to that she gets locked in Tartarus. Technically speaking, Cozy should not get a redemption episode if she did that and lightning cannot get a redemption episode for no more than she done and I know some people are probably going to be upset with me for saying that but that's just how I feel I don't want to see cozy get a redemption episode if lightning does cannot it's not deserved for for cozy considering what she has done she and if cozy can learn her lesson then why can't lightning so, Cozy, if Lightning can't have one, Cozy should not have one. And likewise, I also feel the same way about about Queen Chrysalis. Queen Chrysalis should not get a redemption episode either. She should not be reformed. To be honest, again, and this, again, it kind of makes me think about Lightning. Uh, if Lightning can't get a redemption episode, considering, uh, considering the bad that Chrysalis has done, she should not get one either. It would be unfair for Cozy and or Chrysalis to get a redemption episode whenever Lightning does not. And so I really hope that Chrysalis does not either get one. What I'm actually hoping happens with, with, Queen, with Queen Chrysalis is that she has to be destroyed. I'm hoping that she has to be killed. And it would kind of be a, a very kind of a just thing, I think, uh, that she tries to take over again and it's actually Thorax who has to deliver the final blow and in her final moments she 
looks at him and says, you would turn on your queen. And he tells her, you're not my queen anymore. And you haven't been for a long time. I'm my own changeling now. And then boom. That's what I think should happen. I think that Chrysalis should not get redeemed. And she should either be destroyed or it be left open-ended. That's what I think sh should happen. I don't anticipate that we will see anything with lightning throughout the rest of Season 9. And if we do, it's just going to be another episode showing her being her showing her showing being a bitch to someone else. We don't need to see that. Um, we've, uh, we already saw it once. Uh, we really don't need to see it again. Uh, one time is enough to see how much uh, of her personality is. We don't need to see it again. It don't need pounded in. It does not need pounded in, pounded into our skulls. It's pretty much like being around someone in real life. You experience that. You see how they really are. You don't want to be around them anymore, and you don't need it pounded into your head how how much of a prick that they are. So personally, I do still like lightning, and I still myself imagine a redemption thing for her in my head. I can easily do fan do another fanfic on it. Or I, I did one already. But um, considering I think since we're not going to nine times out of ten see anything with lightning in season nine and it's just going to be open ended, that's what I think we should have with Cozy. I don't think that it should be shown what happens to her. I think she should be left there. And then I think Chrysalis, she should not be reformed either. I think it should be left open-ended for her as well. And that's what I think should happen. And I know some people are going to be upset with me and tell me uh, otherwise, but that's how I feel, and I don't regret it. I don't feel bad for that. Um, I think one interesting turnaround, and I will say this much, one interesting turnaround would be for in Season 9, if... Cozy could return in season, I mean, not, uh, sorry, not season nine, but G5. If Cozy could actually return in G5. And it would be an interesting setup if she is reformed in G5. What happens is she's been locked away for years. She's now the same age as the main six. And she's been locked away in Tartarus all that time. And it has changed her. She's now good, and so she is let out of Tartarus. And her time there has changed her, so now she's trying to do good across the new whatever world is in G5. And I think a comparison that I think about is Supernatural whenever Dean went to Heck, the time he spent there. It hurt him mentally. I mean, it kind of warped his mind at that time. The thing, I mean, how long he, I mean, the time that he had been there, the things that had happened to him there, it was not something he wanted to talk about. And so I think that could work here for Cozy in G5. It's not something, her time in Tartarus is not something she's comfortable with. It's some, something that she suffered through, she learned her lesson. I think it would be an interesting setup for that, personally. But, again, Lightning didn't get a redemption episode. I don't want, I don't think Cozy should not, and I don't think that Chrysalis should either. But, again, this was a very interesting setup with Cozy and her being evil and the subtle and brick-to-the-face glimpses of her how evil that she was throughout the, throughout the different episodes. And it was even more... I mean, we, we saw her conniving, cunning attitude and how manipulative that she could be but it was in this episode that it really come to a head and we finally got to see what that she was fully capable of and what her goal was which was to take over and be the empress of friendship however there was a couple of things that she was not anticipating uh, that did foil her plan number one she was not counting on the magic of friendship and she had a different attitude about friendship than what Twilight did and in general it does work in that way. Uh, Cozy believed that magic was power, that friendship was power and for Twilight it is power but it's power in a different way. It is friendship 
is strength. It's power, it's strength. The power is in that strength, in the emotions that is tied to it, in the care that you have for that friend, in the strength and the courage that they give you and that you give them, uh, the bond that you have, the will to do things, the drive, and the the courage to overcome obstacles that you would not that you would not be able to handle by yourself, and that is friendship. That is that is friendship, and that is the power of friendship. It makes you stronger emotionally and mentally. And Cozy, however, was using it in that she could rule with that power of friendship. But Cozy was not looking at it in the same way. Twilight knows the power of friendship, real friends, real friendship, others that care about you, that want to help you if you're in trouble. They want to help you. They want to be there for you and that you want to be there for them. You want to help them. You're there for them. You're there for each other. You help each other. You help each other to grow and that Twilight knows that. Cozy, however, is not looking at the other ponies as friends. Not in the same word, not in the same phrase, not in the same meaning that Twilight is. She's looking at them as numbers. The more friends she has, the more powerful that she is. She doesn't, and that's what she said <clears throat> to Tirak at Tirak at the end is want to be friends. <clears throat> Cozy is not a unicorn or an alicorn, so she can't use magic in that same way. However, every single character, both unicorn—I mean, unicorn, uh, Pegasi, and Earth Pony—they have their own special kind of magic. But Cozy thinks that she can rule with that power, with the power of friendship but not rule in that same sense. Now, Cozy was interesting in how manipulative and cunning that she was with her plans. And whenever... And again, I have to question, where the freak is this girl's parents? Like, what? Did she come out of Satan's butthole or something? I mean, she, who had this kid? <coughs> But she wanted to, I mean, Twilight knew the power of friendship. She knew friendship's true benefits. And not just her, but she also knew, oops, but the student six as well, they knew about friendship. They knew about the power of friendship because they had experienced it. These characters from so many different walks of life had come from, I mean, whenever their, their, um, their species, their races had not really got along. I mean, they hadn't really conversed too much with each other, but here these characters had bonded. They had formed an extremely strong friendship. They got to where they count on each other. They rely on each other. They trust each other and they love each other and they want to be with each other and work together and have fun and they learned that and because of that strength of friendship that they had learned they were able to use that power to def get the magic back across Equestria and save Equestria and save every pony as well and so the students were able to save Equestria on their I mean they were able to legit save Equestria and Cozy was not planning on that. She was not planning on that. And you could say that that's where her plan was foiled. She was looking at friends as a number. She was looking at it as one kind of power, but she wasn't looking, she wasn't realizing that it was another kind of power. The power of friendship is not something that you can wield. It's something that you have in here. And Cozy did not realize that. And so she did not anticipate that the power of real friendship would destroy her plans of what she thought friendship was. And that's exactly what happened. Her plan backfired because real friendship 
met false friendship. Cozy had false friendship for every single other character, every single student, because she wanted to use them. They were nothing but stepping stones to her, a means for her to gain and grow more in power. They were nothing to her. And so whenever she called them friends, that was her word for a stepping stone. However, the student six, and as well as the main six, they knew the, the power of real friendship. What real friendship is, and what it holds, and what it does and can mean. And it was that friendship that was able to stop Cozy Glow's plans, and foil it, and defeat her. And so... Yeah, this is a very interesting take and a very interesting look at at that. And Cozy again, she's an interesting villain in that she's not the laughable villain. She's not the villain that you laugh at and you think, okay, this is a cool villain. No, she's the kind of villain that you're concerned because they're unpredictable. You don't know what they're going to do. You might have an idea, but they are unpredictable. And Cozy was that. All you knew was that she was wanting to take over and rule over the school. And she was willing to step on anyone that got in her way. Including Naysayer, who was the head member of the EEA. <clears throat> and even against the princesses, Cozy was willing to stand up against them. I give the girl credit. I mean, she's got some ovaries for her to be so little. But, yeah... With that hunger and lust for power, it drove her to the brink, uh, possibly of a bit of insanity, but it caught, it foiled her plan. Her bravado, her, her courage to stand up against the others, <clears throat> kind of, I mean, it, at first it kind of worked in her favor. But again, she wasn't anticipating. So, yeah, it's interesting to see that go down. And, yeah, Cozy, honestly, I do like how the episode ended with Cozy looking at you evilly. And you, I mean, it's foreshadowing. You, either she, either this is saying that she will return in season nine and she will get out or this what they've done with this episode and I don't know but or what they've done with this episode with the ending is they've actually done it in a way that it's kind of similar to how horror movies end most horror movies if it's a franchise it you know the bad guy isn't dead at the end you know they're gonna come back and so there's always a thing at the end that opens it up for the next installment. And even though you may never get it. I mean, look at Christine in 80, what, 80, <coughs> what, 83? Look at Christine. Christine was crushed. And then at the end of the end of the movie, you see a piece of her grill wiggling. It was done that way to make you wonder is Christine dead or is she still coming back? Will she re re will she repair herself or what? Never got a sequel, so yeah. Um, but that's just an example. Other horror movies have a similar gimmick. They end with the concept of th the end? Question mark. Is it really the end? That's how this episode ended. And it could have ended without showing Cozy with her just showing her being locked up. But no, they had to do it so that she's looking at you maniacally, evilly, and planning her revenge already. Like, she has no f concern, she has no fear about being locked in here. Because she thinks or knows that she'll get out at some point. And so I have to really say, I do love how they ended the episode. It didn't end with the typical, normal, happy ending completely happy ending with showing the characters hugging, showing them laughing, and then showing a, a showing a camera pan back as it shows the sun in the distance. Nope. It ended with the villain looking at you evilly. And 
so yeah, this is a kind of how a horror movie would go, and I like it because of that. So yeah, uh, it's different than the normal endings that we get, and especially considering this is uh, the ending for season eight. So that's interesting, and this kind of also takes me back to I think it was Castlemania whenever the characters were inside the castle, and at the end of it, you see the yellow-eyed figure turn and look at the camera. I don't know if it was actually ever revealed if that was the Pony of Shadows, if that was the Korra, or what. I, I don't really think it was actually ever officially revealed, but uh, that's the only other episode that actually ended with something like, okay, with the exception of uh, the episode where Fluttershy... Uh, the bat episode, Stop Bats, where Fluttershy become a vampire bat, and then at the end of it, you see the fangs. And we've never seen, I mean, we haven't seen anything else with that. Uh, like Fluttersh, I mean, 100%. We haven't seen anything else kind of continue with that. Is it on my screen? Nope, never mind. Uh, since then, like, Fluttershy's never had a hunger for apples. So, it's, basically, this is, this may be foreshadowing, but I think it's more just an open-ended ending. Will she return? Will she not? That's left up to the future writers. But it's there as a setup, in case someone wants to take over. And I know there's going to be some really good fanfics that are going to pick up with this. And I'm very interested to read them. But, yeah. That was my thoughts on that was my thoughts on this episode um i really did enjoy it it was a good finale to season eight and like i said i am glad that cozy did not get redeemed because in my mind if lightning does can't re get re i mean does can't get redeemed then i think cozy should not either uh if lightning is supposed to be an antagonist then i think cozy and chrysalis should stay antagonist as well um but i do like how this episode handled and the dark tones and atmosphere that the episode had and i like how the ending was not completely 100 percent happy ending how it ended with the ominous foreshadowing ending i like that it, it, it's different but i like how they did that uh it's a different spin it's different for them to do that with mlp but I like it. It's 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 a it's a change of pace, but it does fit. It works great, and it it did work in this episode. And I uh, also really love what they did with the with the concept, the story of friendship, and how here you had real friendship, and then you had fake friendship, and how both were kind of at first facing off, and it seemed like the fake friendship was going to actually kind of win. But you knew that in the end, the real friendship was going to be stronger. It was going to overpower that, and it did. And um, so, yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed that concept as well. But, uh, again, Naysayer, I still don't, I'm still not fond of that guy. I mean, I can't imagine in, in, in real life, uh, I can't imagine in real life a white guy hanging over the edge of a cliff and then a like uh, a black guy saving him and then the white guy's like oh my gosh i'm suddenly no longer a racist yeah I, I i don't see that happening i don't see that happening it might have happened but i really don't see it happening so i'm not saying once a racist always a racist some what uh, what's that old saying um a tiger can't change its stripes there might be times whenever a tiger can change its stripes. I'm not saying that once a racist, always a racist completely. But, yeah. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know of any direct uh, situations where somebody who wa was a racist once uh, suddenly was like, I love everybody! Yeah. It, it, and especially if, if they're in a situation to where they get their butt handed to them, and then the person who they were against rescues them. Yeah. I kind of can't help but wonder if he's still part, still somewhat against them. Uh, you know, he just didn't just open himself up to them completely just like that. Uh, I still wonder about that. So, I don't trust him. I still don't trust him. 
But yeah, it's interesting also the pillars and Star Swirl were not even mentioned in I mean they the pillars were not seen in this episode, Star Swirl was mentioned, but he was not seen in this episode. Um but I do like how the main six did have a part in this episode. And uh Starlight also had a little bit of a part as well. But honestly, it was the student six who were the main uh, they were the main hero, uh, heroes and heroines at the end of the episode. So it's interesting. And I did love that little gimmick at the end where they thought they were graduating. Like, okay, we saved Equestria. We're, you know, we're good. We know all there is about, is about friendship. And <laughs> Twilight and Celeste just laugh. Like, <laughs> you actually think you're getting out of school that easy? <laughs> Pop quiz. Write a thousand, like a ten thousand word essay on what on this whole experience, okay? Um, <laughs> but um, or fifty thousand word essay um, on this whole whole experience. Now you have to do homework, pop quiz, uh, you know. But it was it that was actually funny. That was that was really funny. <sighs> that was really funny. And again, I it they're still going to be there. They're still students, but school is safe. Cozy's locked up in heck, and that's also another gimmick. Was I love that bit when Pinky makes the mention to T Rex? I can do this for all eternity. Like she's in Tartarus, where creatures spend eternity. <laughs> So funny to me. That's just so funny to me that Pinky would be more of a concern to T Rack than him spending eternity locked in a cage. He would rather spend eternity locked in a cage than have to deal with Pinkie Pie. <laughs> okay, so. If they had have known that dear back during season four, all they would have had to have done is just toss Pinky at him, and he would have submitted. He would have submitted, and admitted defeat right there. Okay, too bad we didn't know that back then. We just throw Pinky at him. But yeah, I did enjoy this episode. It was it was a really good episode. Um, it was a pr really good uh, finale uh, to season eight. It no, it, it did not have the intensity. Uh, and the Dragon Ball Z style fighting and action that the season four ending did, um, but it did have a nice dark atmosphere, and I liked it because of that. It had a dark, ominous atmosphere to what was going on and how things were playing out. Uh, it wasn't just all in your face what the villains' intentions were. It was more kept in the dark, kept in you know, kept in secret about what the villain was doing and you still had to see them try to manipulate and trick and weasel their way around and into people's minds to try to trick them and so yeah it was a different uh dark ending but it, i mean it was dark and it was ominous and i liked it for that i did it's different. I mean, I don't think every single ending has to have major explosions and fighting, you know, Michael Bay style. Um, I enjoyed the ending because that it went in a different route. It was the manipulative, conniving ending. And I enjoyed it for that. So, again, to everybody that worked on this episode, everybody that has worked on Season 8, thank you, Hasbro DHX. Thank you to everybody so much that has given us Season 8. Thank you to everybody that... I mean, thank you so much, Hasbro DHX, for season eight. Season eight has been a great season. Um, to me, to me, to me personally, it has been a great season. So, thank you to everybody that worked on these episodes. Thank you so much to everybody who worked so hard on season eight. Thank you all so much. And uh, I'm also, I'm still looking forward, and I am really, I'm really looking forward to season nine as well. Um, but again, thank you to everybody so much. Okay, there we go. It froze for some reason. But again, thank you to everybody. It froze for some reason. But again, thank you to everybody. Thank you, Hasbro DHX. Thank you, everybody involved with all of this. Thank you all so much. And um, thank you guys again for joining. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.